The thing is, in, when investing, a lot of people um, suffer from confirmation bias. They make a stance based on maybe, I don't know, a simple news article, and then they'll actually go and invest or change their business based on what they, you know, from one media source or one source of data. And that's deadly. I, I've, I've messed up before in the past, and after, the thing is, the best learner on the markets is when you lose five or six figures from a silly error. And so from then, I, I've always tried to find the, the reasons why stuff moves. And I'm called the realistic trader. Um, at the moment, I'm quite pessimistic about everything, but there's good reason why. And I, I want to share you um, sort of the biggest picture. You need to look at everything from a 35,000 foot view, and then you can see what you should do. Um, <clears throat> so the plan for today, the key driver of the world, uh, discovering the global time bombs, uh, the power landscape, which is something not many people are aware of, uh, the big incoming shifts, and then what should a small business owner do? Because um, it is like a tsunami coming at several fronts. So the first big thing, or oh, the key driver of the planet is demographics. Demographics rule all. Um, I had to take a few slides out because Dan <laughs> mentioned this earlier today, so I don't want to bore you with this. Um, but for those who are not too familiar with global demographics, it's basically, um, <clears throat> it's the big underlying reasons why things happen. So for example, China had a one-child policy um, for, for a long time, and one of the, key, one of the res results or the effect of that is they now have a top-heavy demographic. They have no young workforce. Uh, also, it created mass female genocide. Um, that was another thing that they didn't hear, because when a f Chinese family had a baby girl, they're like, oh, sh sh I want a boy, and they just abandoned them. So it was horrible. Um, however, there were some bad things, but there are also some good things. India is going to be reaping the rewards from this, because China needs workforce, and they're just going to be taking workforce from, uh, from India. So, yeah, there's ups and downs to everything. Now, there's a thing, when you look at the generations, um, there's all, the, the next generation always cottons on to something, and the previous generation goes, oh, it's never going to work, or you shouldn't do this, and the, the new generation's like, oh, you just don't get it, you're old. Um, so from World War II, we had the silent generation, so they came back from war, they were scared, uh, and so they bought gold, which has, for thousands of years, been the safest thing around. Uh, and guess what? Whenever a generation latches onto something, they boom it. So they bought gold, gold went up. The baby boomers, they bought equities. Equities boomed, which is why we're sort of living under the false pretense that stocks always go up. Not anymore. You then have Gen X, um, sort of a very small demographic, um, where they basically jumped onto, in fact, small demographic, but they boomed a lot of things with the help of tech. So they boomed hedge funds, they boomed mobile phones, and they boomed the internet. But what about Generation Y? What about us, millennials? I'm a millennial, and I think we are the whiniest generation out there. Like, I don't, I don't like my generation. Um, but we are going to embrace and boom all forms of tech, especially cryptos. Um, and then Gen Z, who knows? Um, like, we probably don't even know what this tech is. Uh, I mean, put it, put it this way, Pokemon Go amassed 60, 60 million users in nine months. No, like if, if, if you even talked about Pokemon Go to someone 10 years ago, they would have thought you were an idiot. Um, and, but now, yeah, you have grown adults crossing the street on their mobile phone, like trying to find these mythical cartoons. Anyway, and so we have very good um, data over the last, I guess, 60 years. Um, and according to the US Census Bureau, we, we have tracked demographic spending to plus or minus a year. It, it's, it's scary. And so what we have is the demographic spending wave. And so typically we enter the workforce at the age of 20, and then we spend more money in our whole lives on flats and weddings when we're 26. We then try and settle down and have babies. So we then get a starter home when we're 31. We um, then trade up when we were 41, because we need a bigger home, our kids are now like 10 years old, they probably, if you have two kids, you now need two separate bedrooms, yada, yada, yada. Um, you spend more money on furniture when you're 46, because they're now teenagers, they they're going from like a bunk bed to double beds, etc. cetera. Um, uni fees when you're 51. Um, <clears throat> by the time you're 53, your kids have left home, you probably stop paying their uni fees, and you now go and splash out on a car. It's, you know, the late life crisis. Um, and then it's game over. Um, <laughs> from, <laughs> game, sorry, game over from a peak spending and peak earning point of view. Um, so 
Yeah, so you basically, as Dan said this morning, it's a, it's a liquidation or consolidation phase. So you then spend more money on healthcare. 65, you, you somewhat retire, and then you, you travel the world, uh, or as much as you can, depending on how much savings you have. And then after five years of traveling, you're so pissed off with airport security, you just like, put me on a boat, get me drunk, and I'll just sail all over the world. <laughs> uh, like, it, yeah. But then, then health, really starts becoming a factor. So you then have prescription drugs uh, and then nursing homes. And also, eight, I missed one here, lawn care, 83 years old. I never knew that. Old people spend more money on lawn care than any other um, age group. Shall we go to the pub now, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, looking at this room, you are, I, I would say, between 40 and 50-ish. Um, so you're entering your peak earning and peak spending. I guess most of the people here are Gen X. Um, and I guess when you're looking, I mean, if you're a new business owner or even an existing one wanting to get into a new sector or industry, go where the growing mountains are. Go where there's going to be booms. Uh, so for example, if you look at Branson, Branson probably really knows this, in, yeah, he must know this now, but I guess, I bet he didn't know in the beginning. All he did was surf the baby boomer wave because he is a baby boomer. Look at what he, he like when we're, when we're young or when the baby boomer was young, it was all about rock and roll and the Beatles and you buying records. So he set up Virgin Records. And, and a few years ago, I said, I bet my bottom dollar he's going to get into uh, healthcare at some point. Well, guess what? Branson owns 18% of the NHS, pretty much. Um, so he's getting in, so he's got Virgin cruise ships now. He's going to get into maybe lawn care, who knows? Um, <clears throat> so go where the growing mountains are. And the thing is, when you look at the demographic spending wave, it's like a pig going through a python. So imagine a python eating this pig. You ba well, not you baby boomers, there's no baby boomers here, but the baby boomers, it's, it's, it's like going through the body of the python. It creates a massive boom and then a bust as it leaves. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's quite foolish that, I mean, there's some people doing, going big on autos at the moment, as in, I, I think the car industry is screwed because as, uh, the millennials, we only care about access, not ownership. And yeah, I mean, that's why Uber has, has boomed. It's because we want access. We don't want to really own cars anymore. So I think getting into the car industry, I mean, you're screwed. I think Tesla's going to run, own the world when it comes to this thing over the next 10 years.